We like to share stories and tips on wellness and recovery on this show. With more about this in our Walk the Talk segment, here's Kathleen Pache. Thanks, Karen. My guest today is Vera Calloway. 20 years passed between the time Vera Calloway experienced her first major depressive episode in high school and her decision to seek short-term therapy in New York City. Even then, Vera didn't understand the role major depression played in her life until she lost a job here in Los Angeles. She drove past South Bay Mental Health and ended up stopping one day because she knew something was wrong. She never lost a job in her life until then. Therapy and participating in peer-run groups at South Bay led her to becoming a peer advocate. She now works as a service extender at the Older Adult Program at Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health Contract Agency, SSG. Welcome, Vera. I'm so glad you could be here. Thanks. It's good to be here. What happens when you get very depressed, when, when you're at your worst? When I'm at my worst, I usually shut down. I mean, it's like uh, between night and day. Um, I shut down. I don't talk to anybody. I isolate myself. Um, when friends call, I don't answer the phone. And um, even with my family, it's very hard for them to get a word out of me. Um, mm -hmm. That's so pretty it's common pretty debilitating. That, that people tend to do that, tend to isolate when they have some sort of mental illness. What mm -hmm. do you do to get out of that depression? I have to go to my wrap book. You know, the Wellness Recovery Action Plan is great for me. Uh, it's kind of a reminder of the things that I really enjoy doing. Um, for example, visiting my niece and nephews and playing with them because they're pretty young and they're um, really fun to be with. Mm -hmm. I call friends. I do yoga and meditate as well. My rap plan um, usually goes into effect when I realize that I'm isolating myself. And then after that, I have to open my rap book and look at some of the things that I really enjoy doing, like cooking a fantastic meal for dinner, and do all the things that I should be doing, but that don't really come up or come to mind when I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. so, so isolating yourself, is that one of the, the things that you notice to, that sort of urges you to you know, do yeah. those things? Yeah, that's right. I isolate myself. Uh, I don't really talk to people. I don't want to go anywhere, um, even to get groceries or things like that. Um, and I kind of just shut down. Mm -hmm. When you yeah. went to South Bay Mental Health, what kind of treatment helped you the most? Well, individual therapy helped a lot at first, and then um, I started really coming out of my shell after I started attending peer-run groups, mm -hmm. and uh, for example, Coping Skills, Recovery International, uh, those have helped me a lot, you know, especially being able to meet with other people who have same, you know, similar problems that I do with depression. What would you tell someone who is in your shoes that uh, if they were just looking to feel better? I think, you know, a problem with me was always self-stigma, and I think that's why it took so long for me to finally reach out and try to get some help for myself. So I think the most important thing would be to just, you know, realize that you can't do it all alone. Mm -hmm. You know, things aren't going to happen overnight. So I would suggest that they go to one of the county mental health uh, clinics and seek help. And okay. It's interesting you say self-stigma. Now, how do you how do you define that? Self-stigma when you're ashamed. You know, mental illness is that. It's an illness, and you know, it's not really something that you have control over when it happens. Um, so I know that when I was first diagnosed with depression, I was really ashamed, and you know, I had to force myself to go to therapy and to visit the clinics. But eventually I saw some of the rewards, it began to pay off. So, um, you know, I realized that I didn't want to be depressed anymore. Great. Yeah. What does hope mean to you? Hope, gosh, I think um, hope means for me to be engaged, you know, in society, for me to help others. You know, that gives me hope. Mm -hmm. To be part um, of a community. Yeah, you know, and to get away from just thinking about myself. Yeah, that's really um, important. Yeah, Something. it helps to help others. Yeah. If there was someone watching today that might need help and was maybe afraid to ask, what advice would you give them? I think the first step would be for them to recognize that there is something wrong. Um, and after that, you know, to realize that, that mental illness strikes a lot of people. You know, they're not alone. 
and the county, LA County Department of Mental Health has a lot of clinics um, and I'm sure that whoever it is who's experiencing the problems, you know, would really, really get something out of stopping by one of the clinics. Mm -hmm. There is help available and yes. people want to help, want yes, to help. Yes, that's right, you know, but the first thing would be to recognize that you do need help. Right. Thank you so much, Vera Calloway, for being here on the show. You're welcome. It's good to be here.